Well, good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is the start of another work week, and it is Monday, October 11th, the 28th Monday of Ordinary Time, and it is the feast day of Pope St. John the 23rd, also known as the Good Pope. Um, he was around during the, he actually is what initiated, who initiated the Second Vatican Council, Although he passed away prior to its completion, I put completion in quotation marks, because we're technically still in the time of which the Second Vatican Council needs to be implemented, in which the Second Vatican Council, I believe, was completed in the 1960s, when a lot of changes took place in the church due to the modernist secular society amping up more and more as a result of the... Um, Industrial Revolution and technology entering into things. So anyway, the church always needs to respond to to society, which hurts the church. So anyway, he is um, also commemorated um, as a saint, I believe, in the Anglican Church of Canada, as well as the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Um, and then some other organizations. His feast day is actually on June 3rd or June 4th, but... For the Roman Catholic Church, it is today. So anyway, he's a patron saint of the Second Vatican Council. Today's Gospel is from Luke chapter 11, verses 29 through 32. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. While still more people gathered in the crowd, he said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it, except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. All right. The demand for a sign. Let's go to the meditation today. This generation seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. When we think of Jonah, we often come what often comes to mind is a childhood tale of a man who spent time in the belly of a whale. Yet we know that this story resonated deeply with Jesus because he refers to Jonah several times in the Gospels including in today's passage. So what was it about Jonah that spoke to the heart of Jesus? Perhaps Jesus saw similarities in their missions. Like Jonah, Jesus was sent by the Father to invite people to repentance. In this way, both men were prophets. And like Jonah, Jesus would spend time in the darkness of a place that would have swallowed him up. For Jonah, it was the stomach of a great fish. For Jesus, it would be the darkness of death, which he would overcome on the third day. Yet, Jesus was also well aware that his mission went beyond that of a prophet. Jonah, or any prophet, points outside himself to God. Jesus pointed, him, pointed to himself as the Messiah. No more sin offerings to make some partial reparation with God were needed. No more sackcloth as the Ninevites wore to simplify their repentance, to signify their repentance. Now repentance meant turning to Jesus, believing in him, and accepting his invitation to be reconciled in his Father to the Father. Neither did Jesus ever try to run away from his calling the way Jonah did. Rather, he loved and fully embraced the will of his Father by inviting us to receive God's forgiveness and mercy. That was, and still is, his mission, to call each of us, God's beloved children, to turn back to the Father. That's what Jesus meant by the sign of Jonah, God himself in the midst of his people, calling them to return to him. The sign isn't just the miracles of healing or the multiplication of fish and loaves. It's not even being people being raised from the dead. All those point us to Jesus, the perfect sign of the Father's love. Just as he did for that crowd all those years ago, he, he, is, he is inviting you to turn to him, be forgiven, and receive him as our Lord. Jesus, I accept your invitation. I want to receive your mercy and forgiveness today. There we go. Have a great Monday. God bless and keep it real. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, amen.